Hi there, I'm Andrea Koppel, and it's time for Coffee, the podcast where you get to hear firsthand what the jobs and careers that interest you the most are really like. Hey there, Java junkies. Welcome to another K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. By the way, K-Cups come in three sizes, single, double, and triple shots, or roughly one minute, five minutes, or 10 minutes in length. So if you don't have time to throw back an entire caffeinated career conversation, these K-Cup mini episodes of T4C can give you a quick caffeinated fix, whether you're on the go or you only have a few minutes to binge. So grab your mug and take a chug, because it's time for a caffeinated career triple shot K-Cup with my guest, Renee Reed. Renee, I'd like to flash back very quickly to when you were in college at Savannah State University in Georgia. It's a historically black university. You majored in marketing and communications. Did you know what you were going to do with that degree when you graduated, Renee? Absolutely not. I actually started out as a radio and television major and I just knew I was going to be the next Oprah and I was going to have my own radio and television show. And then I made a pivot, I think my junior year to marketing and said, okay, I'm going to do something in marketing. I don't know what it is. And it was actually PR marketing at the time. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do PR. And just started to look at positions and started to apply and could not get into PR at all. And at the time, I had no idea the importance of networking and understanding, you know, certain industries are very heavy on referrals and people who are already in the industry and it's almost clicky sometimes. And so you have to make sure that you know people who are already there. I had no idea about that. I was like, I'm just going to apply to these positions. And so I definitely did not know what direction I was going to go to. I just knew that I had to get a job. I had student loans and they were going to be due soon and I need to pay the bills. And so, yeah, I just applied to different positions and got a position as a project manager because as marketing... So I was just going to ask you, what was your first job when you graduated and how did you get it? Yeah. So I was in Savannah at the time and this job was actually in Atlanta. So I wanted to stay in Savannah. I love the city, love just the people, love the food. Oh my gosh, Savannah food. Yes. And so I wanted to stay, (laughs) but I could not find any job. So then I got out of my own head and said, okay, maybe I need to look broader. Maybe I need to think about, you know, moving to a different city. So not being afraid, not being scared and just saying, hey, let's just and I wanted to stay in Georgia, stay in the South. So I decided to apply myself in Atlanta. And then that's where the opportunities really started to come out in just thinking about a different city to move to, to at least get my career started. And so I was able to apply. I actually got this position through an agency. And so this agency, it wasn't a direct hire. I went through an agency They hired me. And then after six months, I was able to come on full time with full benefits to the company. So that was great. And my first experience, again, going through an agency and then going through full time. And even in that experience, it was kind of weird because someone had to campaign for me, not myself. Like I went for the interview. But in the agency, the recruiter, of course, is the one really making sure that they're negotiating your salary and things like that. So that was my first experience with that. So do you remember where that first job was, Renee, and what the title was? Yeah. So the company was called, at the time it was called EMS Technologies, but they were bought by Honeywell. So it was EMS Technologies and they dealt with what we call access points and in and, and warehouse management systems. It was really cool, really fascinating. So access points and, uh, and data warehouse systems. So really quick, it's when tractor trailers or trucks are driving in and out of warehouse systems and they're connecting to things. Or if you are at the store and you go to cash out and you use a scanner to scan the price of things, that scanner is actually talking to an access point up in the ceiling and transmitting all that information out. And so I got to work with some really big distributors and companies. So I had a little bit of taste of technology uh, there. And so that kind of started the road to technology. 
thank you because I know from looking at your LinkedIn profile, you took a job in 2000 as a project coordinator at mm-hmm. Honeywell, which is a Fortune 100 tech company. And you worked there for six years. You were promoted to become a senior project manager. And then you left in November 2006. Why? So this was the first time in my career that I got laid off. So I was laid off in 2006 and been with the company six years, thought I was going to be with the company for a lot longer. So that was a huge blow for me. And I was, I just remember being so sad and so upset and just not certain what I wanted to do. Because again, this was, I was ready to grow with the company. And I had always been taught that once you get a job, you stay there for years, you don't leave, you retire after 20 years. So I had never thought I was going to leave that job, work with great people. And so this was this force function of "Mm, this is not forever. What are you going to do now? And then went into sales. Yeah, I tried something new. I was just like, okay, well, let's let's see what's out there. And I actually did sales and was a department head for a really big gym or fitness club. It was a 24 hour Lifetime fitness club. Fitness. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was gorgeous. I mean, if you've ever been to a Lifetime Fitness Club, it is like its own city. There's like a water park or a water slide indoors. It's a spa, basketball courts, upstairs, just gorgeous. And so I did sales there. And that was amazing until the recession hit. And then you realize when there was at that time when the recession hit, the gym was a luxury for a lot of people and they stopped coming to the gym and stopped buying memberships. And I had to leave there because I just wasn't making any money whatsoever. And then had the biggest shift of my career and took my degree my years of experience, all of my skills, and walked into a restaurant and applied to be a hostess and a waitress. On your LinkedIn profile, you write, I'm listing this experience at Waka de Pepo to show others the path to UX wasn't a straight line. And I even leveraged skills I obtained as a hostess and waitress today as a UX researcher. The effects of the 2008 recession caused me to take my four-year college degree and years of professional experience and humbly walk into a local restaurant where I was hired as both a hostess and a waitress. And as I shared with you, Renee, before we started this interview, I was fired twice in my 40s and I was forced to reinvent myself and the experiences were not related to the recession. But I can tell you it hurt just as much as if I was laid off due to the recession. And I had to swallow my pride and I had to take a job that I wouldn't have otherwise taken and hold my head up high. And I say that because one of the questions I try to ask all of my guests is if they would share an experience in their lives when they stumbled, when they maybe fell flat on their face, and most important, how they persevered, and if there was a lesson that they learned in the process. So, Renee, over to you. What would you say was it this experience? Was it something else? And what was the lesson that you learned? That would definitely be the standout experience is becoming a hostess and the waitress. I, like you mentioned, I had so much pride because again, here I was with my four year degree and had worked for this big, these big companies, had all these great experiences. And I was going to be a hostess and a waitress. I had never done it in high school. I didn't do it in college. And here I was this professional and I was just going back and I just, I was so prideful, but I had to put pride aside like I said, humble myself and walk in there. And I remember the manager, I will never forget. And I still talk to him to this day. He's just fantastic. He looked at my resume and he was like, what are you doing here? What, what are you doing here? And I just remember sitting back in the booth because we interviewed in the restaurant. And I was like, what do you mean? I'm, what am I doing here? And he was like, you're overqualified. 
And it just hit me. And I was like, well, thanks for reminding me. But I was like, I need a job. I have a mortgage. I like, I don't know what else to do. I have children I need to take care of and I need a job. And he just saw the, probably the desperation in my eyes, but he also saw something where he was just like, listen, you clearly are dedicated and you clearly, and I had had energy up to that point. And he's like, and I have no doubt you're going to be able to do this job well, but are you going to do it for a long time? And I was said, I, I'll do it as long as I need to in order to take care of my family and, and take care of what I need to. But it just turned out to be such an amazing an experience. I And for those who know who Buga de Beppo, the restaurant is, it is just an eclectic place. It's an, ex- it's an experience when you go to Buga de Beppo. There is a hostess stand that kind of looks like a pulpit that you stand up on. So you're actually a little bit higher than everyone. And so I would literally make that into an experience when people would walk in, I would be in this grand stand. And so I just knew to take a situation and still have hope. And I always say this, like I might've felt helpless, but I wasn't hopeless. And that was the driving factor. And I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this with excellence. I'm going to do this with the same excitement and discipline as if I was making, you know, a large salary at this other company. I am still going to take that same type of principles and apply it as a waitress, as a hostess. And it was such a great experience. One of the humbling moments during my, my first shift as a waitress was scraping food off of a plate. And it was a lot of food. So the portions at Buca de Beppo were really large, like family style. And I remember scraping off so much food off of the plate. And it just crushed me because it made me realize, one, just how wasteful people can be with food, how much food people who, are, who need food could have access to. And it did something in me where I said, I need to make sure that I'm changing the way that I think about food and and people who need food. And it just did something with me. And then there was a level of empathy that kicked in at that moment that I use today. Like empathy is so important into understanding people. I wasn't necessarily hearing someone's story verbatim. They weren't telling me. But as I was experiencing this moment, I could feel someone's story. I can imagine someone's story. And that made a difference in how I carried my experience as a waitress, and even now today, fast forward, as a user experience researcher and feeling people's stories without necessarily hearing them, but understanding people's struggles, what they need, pain points, things like that. Thanks for tuning in to this K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. If you want to listen to our entire caffeinated career conversation, please check out the show notes for this episode. Thanks so much for listening to Time for Coffee, where the professionals in the jobs that most interest you always have time to grab coffee 24-7, no matter where you live. I have one quick favor to ask you. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe to Time for Coffee. Thanks so much.